that was uh, yeah it was uh, the first two sets went uh, much better than I uh, was uh, expecting uh, if I can put it this way and um, everything sort of went my favor I was hitting all the spots all the shots that I needed to and Matteo was maybe not showing the level he typically does and uh, but I think the conditions were a little bit in my favor with the humidity and the roof closed it make uh, it made the ball or the court feel a little slower so I felt like I had more time than usual when I play against him so um, it was a little bit of advantage for my for me and then um, third set I was also a little bit fortunate to save some set points and come back and win it on the tie break but very happy with to win in three straight sets and uh, I'll have two days off before Friday semi-final. Great. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You. Name and affiliation. Chris, go right ahead. Congrats, Casper. Chris Otto with the US Open. Yeah. You talked about making it a priority to perform better at the Grand Slam before the season and, you, and you've done that. So my question is, um, are there any secrets or any discoveries that you made along the way to help you get the most out of yourself? Yeah, I think... Uh, at the start of the year, I was uh, a bit unfortunate because I, when we were in Australia, I rolled my ankle the day before the tournament in practice, so I couldn't compete, obviously, in Australia, which was uh, tough because it's a lo such a long trip and uh, you spend, uh, you know, over 40 hours back and forth on the plane to not play a match in Melbourne was a little bit, uh, obviously, disappointing, but uh, I... I, I knew that when Paris came along, I was uh, starting to feel feel better on the clay, especially, and finding my form, and uh, was trying to think, you know, there's there are three Grand Slams left and uh, of the year, and let's try to uh, take the chances I may, may get. And um, during during Paris, something click and clicked, and I feel like I uh, this year have sort of figured out in a better way how to play five sets uh, that and knowing that it's very different from playing best of three sets and it often becomes much longer matches and um, a lot of back and forth and uh, also sometimes realizing or knowing that uh, you can sort of let w one set go in every once in a while if you you know to save some energy for the, r the rest of the set so I think yeah I've matured and learned how to play five sets better than than I did last year. David. Hi, Casper. David Kane, Tennis.com. You're someone who seems to be aware of the perceptions of yourself, whether it's riding hard courts on the camera lens, or <laughs> saying that you're not the flashiest player, but here you are on hard courts so playing some pretty flashy tennis at times. Are you surprised? Are you surprised with what you may be learning about yourself on the tennis court? Is the hard work you're putting in maybe turning you into, turning you into a player maybe different than what you expected? Yeah. Well, I think uh, I'm honestly a bit surprised that. Uh, I made it to the semis here, uh, but I have um, think I've developed my hardcore game a lot the, le the last year or two and I think Miami this year showed me and I proved to myself that I can, you know, beat good players and reach um, later stages in big hardcore tournaments. So that has been a sort of confidence booster for myself, but I think Obviously, when I grew up in Norway, I played six months of the year on clay and six months of the year indoor hardcourt because of the weather. So I'm not, it's not like I don't enjoy playing on hardcourt at all or that I don't know how to do it because I did it quite a lot when I was younger. And just the fact that maybe I prioritize or feel a little bit more comfortable on clay myself at this time of my career or during my career doesn't mean that I don't like to play on hardcourt or that I don't, or that I cannot have good results there. And I think. If you look at this tournament, US Open, and a um, couple of players who've had uh, who have uh, been known as clay court players, let's say Rafa and TM, they have both won here, and Rafa has won here four times. And when you look at the champions wall in the, in the locker room here, you see that there are many different players who won this tournament. Actually, this is a Grand Slam, the last 18 or 19 years that had more winners than the rest of them because. I'm not sure why, but there's something special, I guess, with this place. And this year, I'm pretty sure there will be a new first-time winner here um, this year also. So it shows that it's possible to do it here in New York. It's a sort of city of dreams, I guess. And uh, I guess uh, that's uh, helping me with my with my game and my motivation. Okay. Howard. Hi, Casper. Howard Fenderich with the Associated Press. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask two questions about uh, your father. For, first, 
Is it ever difficult to sort of navigate father, coach, and that whole relationship? Um, for us, it hasn't been, honestly. And um, my father was fairly young when I was born. He was 26, I believe. So I, he, I think he just... From when I was born, he I'm not sure if he had a plan with me to be a tennis player or whatever, but he, my father, enjoyed doing, you know, different sports with that can contains a ball. So, and tennis, golf, soccer, whatever it is, that uh, sort of what we call ball sports is uh, something my father enjoyed and he enjoyed taking me to those uh, places where I could do that, either tennis or soccer or golf. So, um he enjoyed taking me, you know, playing around with me, and I think from a very early age I enjoyed it too, and had that sort of uh, competitive mindset that I wanted to be as good as I could be. And uh, I think my father also saw that since I was young, and has helped me and pushed me from uh, from a young age already. And um, I think I said the other day that even though I'm still pretty young and new in the circuit, I feel like I've been living a professional life already for, you know. 12, 13 years, and uh, because I was pretty young when I told my father I wanted to be a professional tennis player, and since then we put in a lot of hours, a lot of work and effort, so happy that it's uh, going well and that we are still a good team. With coaching allowed here, how much of an advantage is that, and how much help can you get, or have you found yourself getting from him during this tournament? and? Like many kids with many parents in many different areas of life, do you ever think or say, come on, Dad, leave me alone? <laughs> no, not yet, uh, honestly. I mean, sometimes we disagree on stuff, but um, mm, the coaching rule is a little, uh, what should I say, there are some gray areas in it because it's not too easy to know exactly what is allowed or not uh, because uh, when it was first introduced I remember I, I I lost the second set I think in the semis of Montreal against Hubert and then he went out to, uh, in the bathroom to to do a change of his clothes so I had some spare time on the bench so I walked over to my box and asked them a little bit and my father what what do you think I should do or change you know in the set and then the umpire actually came down and told me that you're not allowed to communicate that much. Like you're supposed to keep it around three to four seconds and the player is not supposed to talk too much back to your team. It's more like getting messages from the team. So the coaching rule is still like new and we don't exactly know how it works, but it's been helpful for sure. And uh, mostly for the coaches to feel like they can actually tell you something without being warned uh, for coaching. I think that's uh, very helpful. And um, yeah, like I said, there aren't that much of a dialogue because in the end of the day, we are, we only have 25 seconds between the points and 20 of them, if you have to get your towel, goes to you know wiping sweat or getting new balls and getting ready for your routine and for the next point. So there aren't that much uh, that you can talk about, but it's, uh, it's helpful for sure. Matt? Uh, Matt Futterman from the New York Times. Your father was just in here before, and he said that you know he worked with you very closely until you were 16. Then there was about a two and a half year gap, mm -hmm. and then you're back with him, and that it, it was you who said, "I want you to coach me." Mm -hmm. What was it that made you want to work with your father again at 18 after after you'd been heard other voices for a couple of years? Yeah, um, even though. For those two, three years when I had a different coach or help from another coach, he was still sort of sort of the head of the team in a way. He was still doing all the planning for us and be, he was still in contact with my other coach almost every day during practice weeks and he would come to some tournaments but not too many. And uh, yeah, when, when I had to stop with my former coach Pedro, he was, uh, I was, I think it was around 19 at the time or was about to turn 19. and. Um, you know, we looked at some options, but I said that, um, you know, I'm more comfortable with, with you being around and having him around because I know that a coach will do so much for you and help you be very helpful. But when it's the father as well, you feel like you're taken extra care of because the father will care of those maybe extra percentages that uh, because it's your family. So I felt very well taken care of with my father around and uh, I saw that... Uh, 
he was doing everything in his power for me to play well and uh, I felt comfortable with it so we agreed that he would do most of the travel but that at the same time I needed you know still a place to sort of go to and still uh, um, develop my game and uh, learn from other players and practice with other players in the region. So we agreed that uh, I would go to Mallorca, to Rafa's Academy and get help by them. And um, I still am under their wings and uh, they have been very helpful. So it's been a good good year since we made that decision and uh, hope we can go for many more years. We only have time for one more in English. Look more for the, the sun. If it is Nick Kyrgios in the semi-finals, we'll obviously talk about the chair throwing incidents, the the comments you two have made on social media. How do you talk about your relationship with Nick, and how do you assess him as a player and as a man, please? Well, I mean, I think he has first of all taken big steps in his tennis this year because he has proven that. Um, Obviously, he has been a very, very big talent since a teenager already and beaten the big guys already since he was 18, 19 years old. But this year, he has proven that he can do it for many matches in a row and weeks in a row, week in, week out to be there and play well. So that's uh, exciting to see. It seems that uh, he's really gone in for it this year and giving it, given it a real shot um, because he was close to being top 10 some years back and then... I'm not sure what happened after, but uh, he sort of fell down a little bit in the rankings and has been a little bit up and down. But now he's back to, I think, where his game belongs and where he belongs in the ranking. And he's unfortunate that he didn't get points for Wimbledon because otherwise he would be top 15 again and close to top 10 probably with this result here. So we all know that he is dangerous and uh, on the personal note, we there are not that much of a relationship. I mean, we uh, we didn't say hi in the locker room for some time, but we do now, so it's better. <laughs> so uh, there were a time where it was a bit uh, probably tense after things were said back and forth, but uh, he actually came to me in Labor Cup last year and congratulated me when I won my match, which was nice. So uh, I think uh, it's it's easier now and things have been forgotten. Things have been said, but there's no need to dwell on the past. So, I mean, he's a uh, he's, uh, yeah, exciting player always to watch and you never know <laughs> what's going to come out of his racket or his uh, mouth. But uh, in the end, at least he came to me and and said that uh, he was happy to see me play well, so it was nice. Okay.